Hi, welcome to the Lansky Blog. My name is Ike, and I am the uh, owner and founder of IkesOutdoors.com. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit. We're going to do a little guest blog for Lansky, and we'll talk to you about broadheads and the importance of, of sharpening them and some of the ways you can go about uh, getting your broadheads sharp. Um, uh, just a little background on me. I run and own IkesOutdoors.com. We do product reviews, uh, how-to videos, and hunting videos. And uh, I've been hunting for... 20 years now. This is my 20th year. Uh, I've owned my own shop, uh, ran shops for a long time, so uh, quite a bit of experience in the archery world and quite a bit of experience as a hunter. So we'll get down to the meat of this right here now and we'll talk about what we've got here. What I want to talk to you about today is broadheads and I've got a box here just a different assortment of broadheads and we'll talk to you about the different kind and, and how it's why it's important to sharpen them and some different ways you can you can go about sharpening. Of course, we'll show you uh, the Lansky product that I use to uh, sharpen my broadheads. Um, so we'll start out with the old tried and true. Um, this is a two blade cut on contact head. It doesn't have replaceable blades. Uh, it did have bleeder blades on it, but this one's been um, kind of roughed up a little bit and the bleeder blades are gone on it. Some people call it a four blade. Um, but this was, I call them two blades because I usually don't use the bleeders. So this is a two blade cut on contact head and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, this one here is what you're going to find pretty much. This is pretty much a standard broadhead. Uh, this is a Muzzy MX4 uh, and of course it's been through quite a bit. All my broadheads, most of them that we're going to show you, have been through quite a bit. Um, this is a four blade, pretty standard replaceable blade broadhead. Uh, a lot of companies make these like this with the replaceable blades um, and, and they're pretty good broadhead and, and pretty nice, do a pretty good job. Um, now we've got our next one here is a hybrid broadhead made by NAP. This is an NAP Blood Runner 2 and this is one of the broadheads I'm currently using and this is a hybrid um, it's a two blade not really a cut on contact broadhead but it is a two blade contact that is um, when it hits the animal and get my fingers out of the way it'll open up and it opens up to a two inch cutting diameter nice thing about this and why it's a hybrid is because if it doesn't open up and it hits the animal it's still going to cut it's still going to do damage but when it hits the animal it should open up to that two inch cutting diameter and provide you with a good nice wound jam. This next one is a Trophy Taker Armor Edge and I'm going to take the blades off here this one is a true mechanical uh, broadhead it's got a chiseled point to it when it hits the animal it goes into the skin and hits and your blades deploy. And you can see there it's got rubber bands on the bottom that help you uh, that hold it in, in place at flight but at full at contact these blades will deploy and turn into your uh, deploy your blades and you'll have your cutting diameter there. These are about an inch and a half cutting diameter and um, that's what they'll look like once they hit the animal. That's a true uh, mechanical broadhead right there and that is the uh, like I said that's the armor edge broadhead. So you've got several different types of broadhead and um, your choice of broadhead is is completely up to you. You know I like a two blade cut on contact uh, head. I like these uh, blood runners. Really do have a good success with those. I've used the muzzies in the past and had good success with those and uh, I tested these Ulmer Edge broadheads out as a true mechanical and had really good success in my test with them and I plan on uh, trying these out this year with uh, on whitetail so we'll see how they how they do on that well, so there's different, different types of broadheads on the market and one of the most important things you can have other than a bow that is dialed in and shooting accurately uh, one of the most important pieces of equipment you can have is a good sharp broadhead because you can have it all together. You can have your bow really dialed in and really hitting good. You can have perfect form. You can have your tree stand set up in, in, a great, in a great location. And when that deer comes through, you can make the perfect shot on him. And it, But if you don't have a broadhead, you may a good sharp broadhead, you may end up losing that deer even though you've made a good shot on him. Now that's a pretty extreme case because you can, if you hit a deer in the heart, even with a dull broadhead, it's probably going to go down. But if you hit a deer with a broadhead in a, mar a marginal shot, one that's not very good, or one that's really like a good quartering away shot, and it's got to travel through a lot of the body to get to the vitals, 
then you're really, really going to be taking chances with not having a sharp broadhead. A sharp broadhead in that type of situation may mean the difference between a deer that's hanging on the wall or uh, hanging on your freezer and one that's that's going to get away from you. Um, a dull broadhead like this one here, you know, this one's been shot quite a bit and it's, it's pretty dull. It's not going to penetrate near as much uh, and it is definitely not going to do as much damage. As these blades get dull, I mean you can see this one here is, is super dull. Um, when they go into the animal, instead of actually hitting the tissue and slicing the tissue, you can see how dull that is. When you get into organs, into veins, and stuff like that, uh, into the gut, and thing, areas like that that have some movement to them, the broadhead's actually going to go in, and instead of slicing, it's going to move. It's going to cause that artery to move right out of the way. Say you make a good shot, uh, a good quartering away shot, and you got to go all the way through, um, you're going to get a lot less damage. I mean, it's just not going to do near as much damage as a good sharp broadhead because it's going to move a lot of the stuff out of the way rather than cut it. And we're talking, I mean, my broadheads are razor, razor sharp when I go hunting. And this one here is, like I said, it is extremely, extremely dull. This broadhead, uh, I wouldn't put this on any arrow that I was actually going to take hunting. So, instead of providing a nice, good wound channel, it's going to provide you, you know, it's not going to provide you with a good entry hole. It's not going to do as much damage as it, as it would uh, a good sharp broadhead, and it's definitely not going to penetrate as far. I mean, you just imagine a, a a really sharp object, you know, going into a target, a good solid target. It just can't cut a path like it's supposed to. So it's very, very important to keep your broadhead sharp. Uh, and on broadheads like this, you can actually take this ferrule off. It comes with a tool. You can take this ferrule off, and you can replace these blades, which you can see this one, these are all bent up, needs to be replaced. Um, same way with these mechanicals here. They can be replaced. Same way with the, the mechanicals. They can all be replaced. Uh, that's going to cost you a little bit of money. I know I replaced some of the blades on my uh, blood runners because they were pretty tore up and pretty bent, and a package of the replacement blades for my blood runners for three cost me $20. So uh, it's about half the cost of the blood runners for six, for three of them are forty dollars. So for about half the cost, you're going to get the replacement blades. Um, so the, it's going to be a substantial cost when you get to try to replace them with a lot of blades. And there's some broadheads out here like these two blade cut on contact you can't replace the blades on. So there's a lot of methods for sharpening these broadheads and and getting them sharp and. Um, there's you can do files, uh, you can use wet stones. There's several different things you can use to get these broadheads sharp, and I've done them all in the past. And one of the easiest things that I've ever found to sharpen my broadheads with is this Lansky uh, bow sharp right here. This is a multi-tool made by Lansky. Uh, it's got several of your of the standard Allen wrenches in it um, that you're going to use when you're working on your bow. It's a I believe it's a uh, Let's see here. It's 564 up to 730 seconds. So that's pretty standard for what you're going to encounter on a bow, plus it's got a Phillips and a flathead. Uh, it's also got a broadhead wrench on here, which is very important uh, for sharpening up those broadheads. And this is a universal broadhead sharpener or broadhead wrench. So you can get it on, you can get any broadhead on the market today uh, tight with that thing. Um, but the, what we're going to talk about is this part right here, which is a, um, it's a, it's a good carbide tip or a good carbide sharpener and it's really easy to use I like it because it's got a good you can get your hand away from it some of these sharpeners I've got one sitting over there that's old and wore out but it's really small and you're right up on top of the thing and I don't like that so to sharpen your broadheads I suggest you screw it onto an arrow that gives you a good way to hold it uh, without having your hand right up on top of there and you just take your Lansky bow sharp start at the tip and just work your way back and that usually takes three or four strokes on each side unless it's a broadhead like this one which is extremely dull and it's going to be sharpened right up and you'll notice when you're doing this you'll actually see a little bit of material coming off of the broadheads don't worry about that it's not going to be enough to make any kind of difference as far as the grain weight or anything like that just be sure to clean it up wipe that off there when you're done um, now this broadhead here is not going to definitely not going to be able to get sharp uh, in just three or four strokes 
you can see I got a big divot in there and this is nice because it will actually remove that divot as well and kind of flatten that out so a duller broadhead like this one definitely going to take a few more strokes than, than just the three or four but on a broadhead that um, is still fairly sharp you know it, it's not going to take that many to, to get it off there I always give my broadheads a shaving test and if they won't shave the, ar the hair on my arm then I, I just spilled every broadhead in my, in my broadhead box but um, if it won't shave the hair on my arm then it's not sharp enough to go in my quiver. Like I said this one here is is fairly abused so we're not going to worry about it. I'm going to grab one down here out of my floor mess now. That is sharp and that is one of these right here. I just got done sharpening all of these with my Lansky bow sharp and you can see I can take this broadhead and I can lay it right against my arm just like that. I can go down just a couple swipes with that thing and I'm shaving hair. I mean there's just a, a fairly good amount of hair coming off of there and this one I might even hit it a few more times with that with that Lansky bow sharp but you can see that is a sharp broadhead and that is ready to go hunt um, and a nice thing about this Lansky bow sharp is other than the blades on these that were all dented up and blades like that one that are, are dented up that uh, I really need to take a file to that one uh, and sharpen it down. But <clears throat> broadheads like this that were in good shape and shot into a target a few times, even went in, into a couple deer. I just went over it with this Lansky bow sharp on these. I took it, I pushed the blades back, I put a little piece of cardboard in there, and I sharpened the blades up just like that. Just starting from the tip and working my way down. And just three or four swipes on that thing, and it's just just razor razor sharp and just three or four more on there and that's really pulling the hair off now so um, it's a very good way it also gets you a, a pretty good amount of tools and this thing's gonna last for a long long time and I've got 12 of these um, blood runners excuse me and uh, I was able to spend twenty dollars and replace three of them rather than sixty dollars or um, well let's see yeah sixty dollars uh, to replace the um, all 12 of them so that saved me quite a bit of money and I've got a tool that I can use in my bow and I've got a tool that I can I can use for years to come also got a nice broadhead wrench on there to tighten that thing up when it comes down so it's very very important to have a good sharp broadhead I mean this is one of the things I am I am most critical about when it comes to my hunting um, I want a well-tuned bow I want to be able to put my arrow into uh, the heart of a deer from 40 to 50 yards away and I want to have a broadhead in my quiver that I can actually just shave hair off of my arm with it um, and there are a lot of things to consider about dulling these things really check these out over the years or at, throughout the year if you shoot these into a target sharpen them up if you put these into a quiver that's got foam in it check them out because you may need to sharpen them the quivers will dull them these get such a fine fine edge on them when you get them this sharp it can really take it doesn't take a whole lot to dull some of them and some of them are made out of inferior steel so you really got to watch the uh, the sharpness of your rawhead after you've put it into quivers or done a little bit of shooting with it so um, that's just the tips I've got on your on your broadheads uh, keep them sharp keep them razor sharp and the easiest thing I've ever found to to keep them sharp it does a great job is this Lansky bow sharp uh, just a fantastic product for Lansky um, so I hope this helps you guys out get your broadheads get them good and sharp and be sure to um, to keep them that way. Very, very important to keep them that way. So, uh, I'm Ike from ikesoutdoors.com and I appreciate Lansky letting me come over and do a little guest blog and be sure to check out the other articles on this blog that are written uh, probably a little bit better than, than what I can do as far as writing goes. I like to do all mine in, in video format but uh, this is a good product from Lansky and it's a product that I firmly believe in. Uh, it's a very, very important part of my hunting arsenal and it's a very very good way to save some money and keep my broadheads nice and sharp. It's also eliminated a lot of time from having to sit here with a file or a whetstone and try to keep everything even. Um, now, I mean, it's literally just, it was literally just open this thing up, run this thing down it a few times, the bow sharp down it a few times, and I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to pick up my mess here and uh, get my broadhead box 
all back in order. I uh, appreciate you guys watching this video and be sure to check out the other landscape products and the other articles on the landscape blog.